My name is Josh McVeigh, and what I'll be showing you is the templated graphics workflow for newsroom and journalists who are going to be working out of any newsroom system. So we work with uh, iNews, as you see here, of course, we have ENPS, Octopus, and really any solution that you might be using in the newsroom. We can interact with it. What we do is we use an ActiveX plugin within the iNews interface, and we can go ahead and open that right up. In iNews, I'll go to my plugins and open up our this is our T template filler. This allows the iNews journalists to open up a set of templates. And here, let me show you a little bit closer. Here's the templates that we have over here on the left, and then a set of data elements. Now, these are completed templates, and these are completed by anyone that's within your station. So any journalist can create something, and other journalists can reuse that same element. We really want to limit the amount of times you have to retype elements um, you know, during different shows or at different times. So if somebody's creating a lower third or a full screen graphic, you can reuse that several times just by using it from right here. But let's start off with a brand new template over here on the left. So on the left here, what I have is a series, and I'm gonna go ahead and open up a lower third. I'll show you something, uh, a full screen, in a moment. Here's a lower third, I just double clicked on that, and we can see this template that appears over here on the left. This is a lower third template that was created for Mundo Fox, a station out of Los Angeles. And they are uh, Spanish speaking, they also do some English during their newscast as well. And you can see this has been set up to be very easy for the journalists to interact with. It's a series of checkboxes for what they need, and then they can type in characters that they have, and then they also have this little indicator telling them how many characters they have remaining. So as they type in, putting in text, so we can say newsroom workflow with VizRT, and here you can see that now we have characters that have counted down. This is a template, and any template that you want for your station can be fully customized. So this template has a lot of options. Yours can be much simpler or more complex, connect to databases, do all sorts of things. It's using a VBScript back, uh, backend, so that can be fully customized for whatever you need to do with your templates, making it as easy as possible. Here we can add in a subline too, so we can put in anything else that we want, so I'll say NAB 2014. Now, of course, this template is all customized. It is not what they see on air. We wanna make sure that what you see on air is incredibly accurate. So we use the same exact Viz engine that we use on air to create the preview. You can open up the preview by clicking our preview button over on the right here, and you can open up our preview. And then this will connect with a preview engine that's made available to all of the newsroom. So everyone that's in the newsroom can open up this preview and they'll be able to see exactly what they're working with. So it takes a moment to load because we're generating that still preview, we're using all the power here and it's gonna grab that information. And then right over here on the right, we'll open that guy back up. Let's go ahead and just open it up one more time. Here's that preview for us. And we can see that. Now I zoomed in, but you don't have to and a newsroom doesn't have to. What we can do instead is we can just detach that preview and you can make that as big as you want move that to another monitor, kind of reorganize that, so you can really see exactly what you're working with. Very easy to check what you have, you know, you can see everything. If you wanna have spell check on your templates, you can do that too, you can add in a bunch of other features. And once you've completed that, you'll go ahead and save your template and add it to the rundown. That process is just as easy. I'll click a save button right here, and then I can see I have my name, of that template that shows up automatically. We don't have to type that in again. A journalist can change it if they need to, but most of the time you cl simply click save as new and we'll add that right to our rundown. So now I'll open up my rundown. I have a set of elements. Here I'm talking about VizRT and Maxon. Pull that open and I'll drag this down from our drag icon into my rundown. And now I have it right there in my rundown. I have a little grommet indicating that this is available. We'll go ahead and save our story, and then this will appear through Moss inside of any playback system that we're gonna be using. We're gonna use Viz Trio for our playback, and then over there we'll see our rundown, any other elements that we've added as well. I'll sit you over so we can see that, and I'll come back and show you some other templates in just a minute. So here in Trio, I have a Trio show, and you can use this for your live graphics workflow, and that means for like sports or live events, you have your series of pages that might be created. But what we're doing is we have that power, and we're also integrating the power of the uh, newsroom and journalists. They can bring their elements that they've created right into here. So the operator who's using Trio doesn't have to create everything as well. So what that means is I'll go ahead and open up a new playlist that I have. These are my Moss playlists that I can pull in. And as I said, we have a variety of systems we're pulling it from. 
So I had iNews. I'll go ahead and grab my iNews show. Whoops, looks like I forgot to mouse activate it. I'll go ahead and do that real quick. Very simple to do here. And of course, this will go into Moss. It's all loaded now. And back inside of Trio, I can see this shows up here as my rundown. I'll go ahead and open that right up. And then I have my rundown up here. Here's my rundown with all my elements that I've added before. And we can also see we have our new L3 newsroom workflow with VizRT. We added that just a moment ago to our top story here. We can go ahead and open that up and preview that inside of Trio. So we see that here. And then we can actually take that right to our on-air engine. Let me bring that on so we can see what that preview is. And then we'll take that up to our engine on-air up here. Go ahead and trigger that element. And here is our graphic that we created just a moment ago. Now it came right through that quick. And we can add a series of other elements when you float stories or move them around inside of, the, inside of the newsroom system. They'll float and move right here as well. So this responds completely to what you're doing in iNews or ENPS or any system that you're using. So you can move things and have it change. You know, with a, with a newsroom workflow, it's sometimes linear. You sometimes have it scripted. But you also have to leave the scripted often for interview type situations or breaking news. And it makes it very easy to do that when you're using Trio as your playback tool. We also use this pilot as our playback tool as well. So with those, now I want to show you a couple other templates and another thing that's very important about our newsroom workflow. Back in our plugin here, we can of course open up anything that has imagery and we can pull in images from our OMS. So this is another template that I have. This has a get image icon right here. We can go ahead and click on that and open it up to pull in any image that we might want. So I can search for different images that I want in here. So I have an image of a football field, American football. And this is coming from Viz1 as it indicates. That's storing all our imagery and also clips, which I'll show you in a moment. So here then I can go ahead and select that, click OK. And then whenever I want to preview this, it'll show up with that element in our preview. That image has been scaled down to fit within the frame that Mundo Fox wanted set up. We could add a header and everything too, but I'm going to go ahead and save that to my rundown and I'll move on to show you the next thing. Go ahead and save this and place that in our rundown along with our other story. Now then, whenever you're working in here, we can also add in clips directly to your rundown by instead of going to templates, using the power of Viz1, we can switch over to media and pull in clips as well. So I'll switch over to media here and I'll make sure to choose clips and then I'll search for something that I have. So I have some Las Vegas clips that I might want. Here's a series of videos that were put in showing Las Vegas Strip, and we have some flyovers provided to us by Artworks. I'll go ahead and choose one of these flights from helicopters up above, kind of some interesting information here. When I double click on that, it loads the proxy within our iNews interface, no other windows or anything, right? Like we would use templates before. And we can see how that's working. In fact, we can go ahead and edit this clip in many different ways. We can go ahead and cut it however we want. We can choose to trim off ends and see exactly what we want. We can go through frame by frame, seeing exactly which part of the clip that we want. Once we have that set up, we can go ahead and add that to our rundown and add as many clips as we like. And then they'll show up in our rundown and show up in Trio just the same way. But before I leave here, there's something very important about this. Using this and our template workflow, we can actually combine the two to create something really great. This is our timeline editor, and this allows us to add in graphics right on the timeline. And these are non-burned-in graphics, and what happens is they play at the exact timing that you specify in here. So your journalist can interact with your clip, choose which parts they want, add graphics, and then whenever it gets into the control room to play out in Trio, it plays out the whole package. Everything that's there, including the graphics, all timed out already. You don't have to wait for triggers or anything. It happens all at the right time. So what I can do is click this plus here, and I can add in any templated graphics that I had. I'll go ahead and choose a, a different graphic so you can see some different imagery here. This is a, a lower third that I have, and of course I can preview that lower third. So I'll say Timeline Editor, and I'll make sure to put in Viz1. So I can see my preview, of course, is updating. Once I have that all set, I'll go ahead and save this, save as new, and it adds right to my timeline here. 
You can see it's showing me a proxy, but let's see what it looks like for real along with that clip playing back. Here's the timing. This is going to come in a little bit later, about one or so seconds into that clip. And that clip has been trimmed to a specific timing. I can also change how long I want this to be so that this lower third comes in and out as I choose. Let's go ahead and expand some of this a little bit so we can see it in a little bit longer. Once I have that all set, I can go ahead and just drag this down into my rundown, just like I would use any other template. That easy, go ahead and save this, and I'll go back to Trio, and we'll see it updated there. So it's coming over right from Moss, and it comes in very quickly. We have our field for our full screen that we added a moment ago, and we have our Las Vegas Eiffel Tower that I just added, and if we click this little arrow next to it, we can see that it has this NLE graphic that I added here. Now, one moment ago, this Las Vegas Eiffel Tower, this was not loaded, but now it's loaded on my Viz engine. And this is telling me that the Viz engine that I have connected, it's fully loaded and it's ready to play that element back. So it's 100% there. We can load all our clips and it loads it automatically. I don't have to tell it to do that. As soon as I put it into my rundown, it goes ahead and gets ready to do that. So let's go ahead and I'm going to remove our lower third that's here. Let's take that guy out. And actually, let's bring in our full screen because we wanted to see how that works. Here's that full screen that we had just a moment ago. And we'll go ahead and get rid of that. Now, what I want to do is bring in our Eiffel Tower image. I can actually preview it right here along with everything else. And then I can send that up to our engine up here. Here's that Eiffel Tower. Here's that clip, hands off. It's doing it all itself. And it'll run through and however many graphics, not just one. See, it removed it at the correct timing and then it's gonna trim it, cut that down. Right there is where I had it at. So we can have it go on for as long as we want, add as many elements to the package as you need. So all you have to do is trigger this less often and it'll pull in your graphics automatically. You're really bringing the journalist and the power to them and they're able to bring everything into the control room.